Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on the channel and yes it is another ranking video as always I'm joined by Mr. Critical himself Ewan and uh, Ewan uh, what are we doing today? Well today we are going to be ranking every transfer made by the current Tour de France champions UAE team Emirates ever since they signed the man who's won back-to-back -back Tour de France's he, of course, is Tadej Pogacar. We have a big, long list of guys, including ones that have just signed recently. So, yeah, of course, we're going to be fair with the 2022 signings. It's going to be what we think they can bring to the team. Of course, UAE team Emirates are one of the most exciting teams, well, since they were kind of emerged, and now they're such a round force, you would have said. But we await to see that in 2022. But, yeah, Ewan, for anyone who hasn't seen this before, what are the rules of this ranking tier list? Well, for our tier list, we have five categories, the best of which is superstar. It's a phenomenal transfer. Winning across the board really changed the dynamic of the team all the way down to flop, um, which maybe is not quite so complimentary. But we will judge this based on what we expected of these riders from their Palmares other teams and what we think they could have done whilst they were at UAE Team Emirates. So anyways, Ewan, I won't pronounce his name, so I'll let you introduce the first rider. Well, we are going with Cristian Camilo Munoz. He's 25 years old, moved to the team after surprising their, probably their talent scouts with a stage win at the Baby Giro. However, ever since then, his top results include a 38th place at the Tour de Suisse, 26th at the Tour of California, uh, it's it's nothing really to write home about, but he probably had a good couple of years in Europe. But I'm sure the team, they were probably hoping for great things from this Colombian, as we've seen with many other Colombians in the past. But this risk didn't really return anything in response. So what are we saying? Flop or? Flop. So anyways, now we have the two twins of Ivo and Rio Oliveira. What do you think of these two twins? Ivo, in fact, won the National Time Trial Championships of Portugal in 2020. And uh, yeah, what do you think of Rue? Put a gun to my head and I couldn't tell you who was who. But Ivo, yeah, has won the National Time Trial Championship in 2020. So that's a solid result for him. And Rui as well was sprinting very well at the Tour of Slovenia and at the Volta Espana. So I think maybe Rui, I would say, is a little bit better than his brother Ivo. But they're still 25. They could improve in the years to come. Okay, we can say... Average for now, and uh, since they're so young, and then we'll see what happens. Never that. <laughs> oh, what do you want? It's just I don't know which one is which. That's a fair point. So, anyways, uh, another Colombian. We're only four riders in, and we have another one, Juan Sebastian Molano. Of course, we saw him uh, last year in the Giro. And uh, Ewan, how do you think this 27-year-old from Colombia has fared so far with UAE Team Emirates? He's actually had a decent amount of wins since he moved to the squad, uh, mostly in the Tour of Colombia, and then in Burgos last year, and at the Tour of Sicily, the Giro di Sicilia. He's a solid sprinter. Is he going to be winning a Grand Tour stage anytime soon? I don't think so, but he's a solid sprinter who I think is a good aid to Gaviria, who is, I would say, the principal sprinter for the time being. So I would say average. That's fair enough. Next, we come to a rider who's unfortunately no longer in the team anymore, and that is Jasper Philipson, of course, who uh, managed to take a Welter uh, Espana stage win. Still phenomenally young. And uh, Ewan, what do you think of Jasper Philipson's time at UAE Team Emirates? His time at UAE was pretty solid. He blew up okay. in 2019 when he won a stage of the Santos Tour down under, almost under the radar in Australia and thrown into our conscience then had a few top tens in the Tour de France that year with a Grand Tour stage win at La Vuelta a España in 2020 when the team didn't get any of the victories there I think he was a bit of a saving grace for them he's developed nicely and I would say this is better than expected um, the next rider doesn't really need much of an introduction Fernando Gaviria but I will say Fernando Gaviria was coming here as probably the best sprinter on the planet you would have thought after riding with Quick Step, but uh, you and do you think uh, Gaviria's time at UAE Team Emirates? He's of course won stages well this year already in the Tour of Oman, and he's of course also won that Giro d'Italia stage 
after Ilya Viviani was relegated and a few stages in the World Tour Burgos, but we haven't seen that Gaviria from 2017 that we, what UAE were probably hoping for as well. Maybe it's the Dekanic touch. That's certainly a possibility. I, more was expected, I'd say. He was the talent in sprinting. Everyone thought, well, he's he's the new Cavendish. He's the new threat to win 20 or so to the front stages. Never quite materialized. I think that was ma- mainly because of the moves that he had to the team. Let's not forget, they haven't put him on a Tour de France start list since he moved to the squad. Yeah, definitely. Well, it seems like this is just Colombians. Next, we come to another Colombian who was actually the national champion at the time when he moved there. Sergio Hinao, of course, coming from Team Sky. And this was seen as the move where he was kind of going to be given more of a free reign to do well, ride for himself more and not ride for the likes of Froome or Bradley Wiggins. And uh, yeah, Ewan, um, do you think Sergio Hanau, it panned off for him and UAE? Well, Sergio Hanau stopped winning as soon as he moved to UAE. His last victory was in 2018 when he became Colombian champion with Team Sky at the time. Um, He hasn't been able to run for his own GC chances. His best Grand Tour stage result is 10th his fast at the team. And now I think it was a bit of a, I don't want to say flop, because he was never like this huge champion, but he had won Paris Nice and won stages of quite notorious races. So I would say more was expected. Anyways, next we come to a rider who's already picked up a victory this year, and that is Alessandro Covi, of course, taking the Murcia one day race as it is now. It used to be a stage race. But yeah, Jürgen, what do you think of this young Italian? How has he fared so far in UAE? And do you think there's going to be more expected of him? I, I, th- I think he's doing pretty well at UAE, to be honest. He's just 23 years old. He turned 23 in the autumn. So he's been riding very, very well for someone of that age, getting top fives in the Giro di Sicilia, doing well in Spanish one-day races, as you mentioned with the um, Murcia victory. And also at the Giro d'Italia, he, was, he got some podium finishes there, including second place to Montalcino. So I think this is good for Corvi. I'd say average because he's, we also still have so many years to see with him. Next, we come to another Colombian. Yes, another Colombian. UAE team members definitely like Colombians. And uh, Andres Camilo Adila, who, of course, well, we'll see this later on as well. Uh, UAE are absolutely obsessed with the Giro under 23. And he won it in 2019, 22 years old. So he could still technically ride it if you wanted to. Uh, best result in 2021, you would probably say his... Welter Burgos, uh, 11th place. But you and where would you put this Colombian with a lot of talent? Yeah, he's still very young, 22, born in 1999. Um, he's been solid so far. We've got to wait more years to see where he's going to go. I think there's just a lack of like the big stage races that uh, we, we could really see how he's going. But as the average so far, Give him time. Maybe, maybe he'll be today's new right-hand man. And next we come to a Danish rider, finally. Uh, Under-23 world time trial champion, three years in a row. And this is, of course, Miguel Biel. Seems like he's been a, quite a consistent domestique for Tadej Gacha. Of course, he was in the Tour de France this year and managed to finish seventh in the final time trial. And uh, yeah, of course, is a time trial rider. And uh, Ewan, what do you think of Miguel Biao, the very tall Dane? Well, I, I think he's actually a really, really important part of that team. I, we're going to see him become quite a seeker weapon maybe for them. He's very important in that kind of 100 kilometers to go marker in the stage of just regulating pace. Even in the mountains, he was there. And I think Miguel Biao is better than expected because bear in mind, he is still 23. But uh, Tour de France aside, uh, a rider who was at the Tour de France this year who crashed a bit awkwardly you would have said on uh, descent and uh, yeah potentially cost uh Tari Vagacha the tour of the Basque country title and that is Brendan McNulty one of the rising stars for the USA and uh, Ewan what do you think of Brendan McNulty's contribution to UAE team Emirates so far I really like McNulty you know? hey, I, I, I think he's a really talented rider he's already won this year and finished on the podium in 2022 and I think He's got plenty to give to the team. Maybe he's sacrificing his own 
success. He's 23 years old. He had a solid Giro back in uh, 2020, finishing 15th. And he, we know that he can ride the GC if he wanted to. But the, the way that he's been riding for Pogaccio has been very honorable. And I think we're going to see him probably feature at the Tour de France and be a, a useful asset for Pogaccio once again this year. So anyways, continuing on the American theme and also another previous winner of the under 23 Giro d'Italia back in 2012 and that is Joe Dombrowski of course he's now not with the team anymore he's riding for Astana Premier Tech and uh, you and Astana Ho- Kazakhstan apologies uh, Astana but uh, yeah you and left the team of course took that very iconic uh, win up in Sestola in the Giro d'Italia last year but yeah how, how do you think his time at UAE Team Emirates was Apart from that winner, Sestala, pretty forgettable, I think, for him. But yeah. he really wanted to win at the Giro. He did it on what was a very memorable day. And despite crashing the next day, he could have maybe done more later on in the race. But I would say expected better. But I don't know. Dombrowski's had a bizarre trajectory. Next, we come to the rider that you must be the biggest fan of. And that is David of Formolo. And if you and I'll just be quiet here and let you talk now. Well, Formula finished second as Strada Bianca in his first race since the restart with UAE. After signing with the team in 2020, he was at the Tour de France back in 2020, riding for Pogacar there. In fact, every race that they rode together, Pogacar won. So Formula, exceptional rider, made the difference at liege Baston liege last year, made the difference on stage eight of the Tour de France last year. He is doing very, very well at UAE. Right, okay, we'll put him in Superstar. Someone needs to go in Superstar. Next, we have a rider who was a national champion of Argentina when he joined, of course, an absolutely formidable lead-out man, and he was joining from Quickstep. And uh, Ewan, what do you think of Maximilian Riquese, uh, his time at UAE? He's going to be finishing this year with the team and retiring. Well, he was really good at Quickstep. Not as good here. Full stop. Point blank. What would you? Where would you put him? Um, more, more was expected with his, with his friend Gaviriam. So anyways, the next two riders have, well, a lot of buzz around them. And um, they joined kind of through mid through the 2021 season. And the first one is the Kiwi rider, Finn Fisher Black. And Ewan, where would you put him right now? Of course, it's still very early on in his UAE Team Emirates career. So it feels a bit mean in some respects. Yeah, it's going to be hard to, to really put them here. But Finn Fischer Black came fourth at the Belgium Tour last year, a race that was won by Remco Evenepoel. And he's showing promise of being very, very good. He is just turned 20 years old, born in December 2001. So he's got plenty of time to develop. And I think he could also be another GC rider in, in within their ranks, but probably not going to be as good as our next man. Yeah, we continue the theme of under-23 Giro d'Italia winners, and this is last year's one. Of course, make sure to check out Ewan's video on who he is. But uh, Juan Ayuso, uh, one of the most talked-about talents in cycling right now. Yeah, Juan Ayuso has been generating a lot of buzz. He hopefully will be starting a Grand Tour very soon. But for the time being, there was a UAE training camp the other week, and he was racing Pogacar up the climb and reports say that he was really competing with Pogacar up this race so I am very very intrigued to see what he's going to be doing I'm going to say superstar I think he's going to be fantastic and they could have a trident approach with Joao him and Pogacar now we come to some of the other riders who joined in 2000 for the 2021 season this rider of course came from Sunweb he was reportedly on 70,000 euros and then was offered £1 million to jump ship to UAE Team Emirates. And that was, of course, Mark Hirschi, which took a lot of people by surprise. And, of course, he came as the Flesh Vallone winner and a Tour de France stage winner. And Ewan, he, what do you think of his season last year? He, of course, won a stage in the Tour of Luxembourg. Is that worth a £1 million? 
No, but it's it's Luxembourg, so the prize money probably would have been tax free. Nevertheless, Mark Hirschi, not quite the arrival that we were hoping for at the team. He did ride the Tour de France, bear that in mind. The team had to pull out of some classics because of COVID. That probably messed up his rhythm, but more was expected. Everyone was saying that he was going to be the next big thing. Next, we come to one of your favorite classics riders, we would say, the rider who finished second behind Mess Peterson back in 2019 in Yorkshire. That is Matteo Trantin. And uh, Ewan, uh, what, what have you felt of Trantin's move? The, he's, he's done pretty well. He's settling into a new role, which I think he's doing very, very well of being this sort of elder statesman of the team, helping other riders, not necessarily going for his own success all the time, but really there in support of other people. And he has taken some victories. Towards the end of last season, he took the win at Trofea Matteotti for finishing second at the Giro della Brianza and the Giro del Veneto. So he's had a solid time at the team. And I think he's really going to mature into this role as the father figure to many of these riders who are going to be looking to get classic success and boss their sprinting ability. Because this guy has three to the front stage wins under his belt. Yeah, he's been so solid. Like fourth in Kern Brussel Kern, eighth in Omlut, third in Ghent Wevelgem. And of course, he finished uh, third behind uh, Wat Van Aert and Tom Pickock in the Brantis pile. But uh, yeah, so I would say better than expected. I don't know. I don't know because it's, it's a different role. Next, we come to a rider who was leaving Bora Hansgro, and that was Rafa Maika. Much was expected of him. Or like Tinktoff, of course, that classic man said that he was going to win the Giro d'Italia. That hasn't quite happened, but he came here to UAE and it seems like he's really bolstered the team. He helped uh, Tadej Bogace in the Tour de France and even took a Welta Espana stage win. And uh, yeah, Yoon, what do you think that merits him in the ranking to? Well, once again, another great statistic coming up here. Every stage race, him and Pogaccia entered, they won. So, superstar. Automatically, he was I agree. vital in the Pyrenees at the Tour de France. He, he was there from UAE tour until the end last year. Even got a stage winner at La Volta. Bravo, monsieur. So the next ones are going to be a bit touch unfair, but we'll carry on anyways. First, we have Felix Grosch, the um, German track cyclist. And you, where do you think he's going to be? Well, Felix Gross. Uh, I just had to look up his name. Uh, but he's 23 years old and he's already got a top 10. Well, he's actually got two top 10s this year at Oman and the Saudi Tour. So that's a solid start for him. I know very little about him. So that's just good for average. Middle of the road. Next, we have another one, uh, Joel Suter. And uh, what do you think of him, Ian? He's already got a podium place this year. So he's better than expected so far. Uh, <laughs> we'll just continue this quickly. Alexi Brunel. This is a transfer I don't think anybody saw happening. Um, not even me, and I'm a big fan of the French riders. Who knows what this could be? Now we come to Alvaro Hodge, who you love talking about. Scottish, Colombian sprinter, Alvaro Hodge. Um, I would say he was actually... Well, mm, 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 I'm going to say more was expected because this last year at Quick Step wasn't the best. And I'm going to assume he's not going to do as well this year, given that he's moving outside of the quick step touch. Here we go. Uh, the new friend of the channel, Joao Almeida. We've both tipped him to Giro d'Italia success. And uh, I'm going to go for absolutely superstar here. Also, because he's such a nice guy. Yep, superstar. I think. Uh, Mark Soler. <laughs> I'm really intrigued about this one. This I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated to see what's going to happen with, with Mark Soler, this team. Maybe we're going to see him having a temper tantrum halfway through a stage this year, but I hope not. I'm going to say better than expected because I think he'll be hilarious at the team. Well, going to another writer that you've spoken a bit about, uh, George Bennett, of course, uh, who seems that he got his diet a bit wrong last year at the Giro d'Italia. Um, no, no longer the New Zealand road champion, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, where do you think he will fare? He, uh, we would think that he would just slot into um, potentially the Joao uh, Giro d'Italia team or maybe the tour team for Tadej Pogacar. So he's here to do a job, essentially. Yeah, I think he's essentially going to do what he did for Roglic back in 2020. 
I think I think he's going to be an important part of the team when we get into the GTs for either Joao or for Pogacar, as you mentioned. So, I don't know. You choose. You decide. Mm, will he be a Mica, though? I don't see him as a Mica. No, I don't think he's going to be a Mica. Mike is such an engine. Yeah. Okay. So now we come to the last rider, the German, Pascal Ackermann, uh, of course, was snubbed for the Tour de France last year. I don't see him going to the Tour this year. But um, yeah, what do you think? Do you think we're going to see a resurgence of Pascal Ackermann this year? No, I don't think we are. Um, he hasn't really hit the ground running so far. I know it's February, but he was just at the Etoile de Bessege and his best result was in a time trial. So not necessarily the best sign uh, for Pascal Ackerman. I'm going to say ball was expected. And, uh, yeah, that's basically the end of our list. And um, yeah, I think we've been very fair. And uh, make sure to comment down below what you think of our list. If there's any riders that we've been too harsh with, too kind to, whatever. And of course, uh, make sure to yeah hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Check out the podcast as well. It seems like it's growing quite a bit. And subscribe to this channel and our extra channel as well but that's basically it from you and myself so thank you very much for watching and of course have a nice day